So just a little bit about myself. Uh, I represent a small group with inside uh, BPI as a technology center of excellence. Um, our motto is going out and um, providing lean uh, processes underpinned by convergent technologies. So here we are with uh, BPI and POSCO. I won't go too much into uh, who they are. Um, as Keith said, um, arguably BGC is the largest vertically integrated supply chain um, in Australia, along with POSCO is one of the largest steel mills in the world. And they both have um, a series of different uh, companies that sit with underneath them. So here in Australia, we have uh, what I'm calling a bit of a construction pandemic, and this is really a global pandemic as well. So these figures are coming uh, directly from statistics here in Australia, along with uh, you won't, you'll find similar statistics sitting in the UK, China, uh, and the US. So with our group, uh, what we deal with is we focus on the processes first. So we're not always going straight after the technology. Quite often we look at um, simplifying the process uh, with our supply chain, looking at uh, GPOs that are individually wrapped that sit in a larger container and then those sit in another container as it comes to site. Well, that's just waste. If we can get all those GPOs sitting in one container and organized, then now we're no longer having to unwrap them individually on the 15th floor of a building. Uh, along with it, um, with processes, we look at um, the technologies. So this is uh, a maturity model for uh, building information modeling produced by Australia, very similar to the UK and the US version. Uh, in Australia, there's a, they're seeking to reach uh, efficiency um, with IFC and other open source technologies uh, by 2016. Uh, one of the things that I find very interesting about this is we can attain this now. In fact, uh, if you look in there, uh, BPI, we, we've completely attained um, full life cycle economics with using convergent technologies and processing and having a, a very sustainable ICT system that sits within that. So here we are um, with the, the two companies. Uh, we've pulled together some of the, the best experts that we can possibly find within both companies to create a bit of a, a department. We're calling it Lean Tech at the moment. And our focus is, is always uh, looking at um, scope, cost, time, being able to, to reduce um, those processes or automate those processes as much as possible. Uh, going through this and um, as I've gone through and I've spearheaded this with uh, BGC and a little bit with POSCO, uh, there's been a, a huge investment from the executives um, all the way down the, the chain and getting them to understand what are the matrix, what are the, the benefits of doing BIM or having technologies that integrate with your process. Uh, one of the, the first stances, um, we've looked at other documentation that sits out there in the market, and we began to create our own documents that support what we are actually trying to do, uh, particularly looking at uh, relationship-style contracts that in allow people to exchange information freely. Uh, here in Australia, we also have the, uh, the National BIM Guide. Along with that, we've gone through and we've created our own guides that we believe that uh, the, the builder or the client will actually want and, and need. And they're all aimed for productivity. Uh, we have a bit of a motto that if it's not being productive, we throw it out. So if it's, if it's faster to do it on paper, then we do it on paper. We don't necessarily do it with um, computers and other technologies. Although quite often it is much faster to, to use it with the iPads and other technologies we have. We also look at the international standards, um, which uh, the Building Smart Alliance has gone through, and they've created several of these. Um, we also have the, the BIM Forum. BPI has also gone through and uh, looked at these standards as definitions and guidance as far as, as moving forward. So all this is coming together and looking at creating a bit of a, a business model that makes sense and rationalizes it for each individual um, as you begin to take on a project. So what we have here, we have a picture of um, uh, Ford uh, changing the automobile industry. And going through, he came up with a revolutionary process. It wasn't necessarily talking about technology, it was about the process to keep the man still while the machines move past them. So that one person had a single job. That person's been replaced by robots and we've expedited the process even farther. So where I'm going with this is with technology or with the manufacturing industry, They've increased their productivity by 380% over the last 50 years. Construction has actually decreased significantly over the last 50 years. And it's because we're not adopting the technologies that enable us to leverage the processes that are already in place. We look at the Empire State Building, a building that was designed and built in 18 months, 13-month construction period. 
fascinating building, 103 stories, 108 if you include the needle. Why can't we do that today? Stood as the tallest building for 40 years. We look at the T30 Hotel, a building built in 15 days. 30-story building, hotel, 15 days. So we're now starting to look at how can we bring manufacturing philosophies and principles into the building industry once again. And it's all about dealing with uh, packaging and location-based management and assembling prototypes. So with these prototypes, they, they went through and they assembled them several times and understood that rather than going out and having to weld on site, that they could go and use this as an erector set and bolt things on site much more quickly. So going through and looking at some of the, the tools that we, we go through, um, lean scheduling, or uh, this is the last planner model from Glenn Ballard from the Lean Construction Institute, and understanding the, the frameworks that work best in, the, in social structures. What I've also added in there, lean scheduling is very time consuming and very heavy management. However, now with computers, we can go in and we can automate that much more quickly than we have been previously. Going, uh, moving into the BIM side of things, now, while we can create a 3D model and we can pack it with full of information, we have to validate that. We're going in, we're virtually building this building once before we get out to site. The idea for a builder is we want to make sure that we can quantify that, that we can also check for, for um, not just clashes, but constructability and, so, and uh, tolerances as we move through. So we have to validate that information as it comes through. So here we are, moving from BIM to VDC, so I'll talk about the bit of the difference between the two. For us, BIM is, is a model that's packed with, with all the information that we need. However, sometimes it lacks the process that we need to improve our productivity and manage that productivity on site. So we want to be able to quantify it, understand what does it take, who are the people that need to be involved, what is the equipment, what are, what are the additional temporary materials that are required to be on site. We go in and we begin to break that up by location-based um, system. And we begin to schedule it and we begin to balance our resources. One of the projects that we've tried this on early on was the Perth Arena, uh, going through and creating elements or zones for all the supply chains so we know how much materials and how much productivity are we getting out of each section of the building. And we're able to uh, create uh, KPIs and begin to show, are we actually improving? Or are we slowing down? And who is slowing down or who's holding us up? So just going through and looking at all the different various of lean technologies, Within my company, we're also across the, the mining sector, and so we're looking at UAVs to do scanning. We're looking at uh, total robotic stations to go in and pick up data. So we're, also, we're not just looking at the software, we're looking at the hardware that brings these technologies together to improve our productivity over time. And looking at the, the native tools from the scheduler to the cost estimator to the, the planners to get that integration into our system as well, and not just give them a tool that they're not used or they're familiar with, let them use their native tool and bring that into our own systems. Currently, this is um, the BPI's ICT system integration. Uh, we've focused very much so on the ICT component of this and making sure that each of these tools that you see up there, that they're, they can integrate within each other. And they sit as a, in a centralized database. And they're easily re uh, readable from either uh, a kiosk, a tablet, or your phone. And even though the main work, so the heavy lifting is done with, uh, computers or laptops and with these other systems. Uh, I won't go too much into this, um, but what we're seeing here, uh, this is just a project management information system where now we have, for one of the very first times, we're having our project managers and our client actually engaging into uh, the model and being able to extract information and make comments as they go through. Uh, having visibility, so we use uh, Dorofus is one of the fantastic tools that's um, come out from uh, Oslo, and looking at that as uh, validating the, the client's program information and pushing that against to procurement and eventually to facilities management. So finding the tools that begin to speak to each other so no, we're not having to recreate databases as we hand it over. Uh, looking at tools that give us the, the value and engineering capability, uh, such as Vico or um, Costex, that we can go in and cost engineer uh, multiple iterations of a building and choose by our advantages. Uh, you look at a quantity surveyor, it usually takes six to eight weeks to, to survey one building. Well, we can do that in a matter of days. And we've tested that all the way beginning from concept. 
So this is just talking about continuous improvement. What you're seeing here is a location-based management system set up against with Last Planner. And with this, it's, it's the same principle as a Gantt chart. However, what we're able to see is the transparency between the trades and the knock-on effects that occur when a trade is falling behind in a particular location. And we can go through and begin to understand the resources and materials that are required for that area. And eventually, um, once the product is finally built, we want to hand it over. We want to have all the information and uh, manuals, warranties to hand over to the client. And perhaps they, they'll use Revit now. Perhaps they'll use IFC. We don't know. But our preference is that we hand over a open source, non-proprietary uh, uh, system that they can open up in 10 years from now. Um, hospital might go through renovation every three years. We want to give them information in a single database that they can open and close as they need it rather than having to recreate that through other platforms such as WebFM and generate work orders from there.